nodal analysis. That's what we start with, Kirchhoff. So first of all, an electrical network consists of interconnected network elements. A node is an interconnection point and a branch is between two nodes. That is important to know the meaning of the words, nodes and branches. So here, Kirchhoff's current law. That's what we are going to use. The sum of the branch current flowing into or from a node equals zero. So the sum of all these currents equals zero. For a network with n nodes, which means that we can select one node as a reference node. So this is, for example, ground, the reference. We know the voltage at this node, we just define it. And then we have n minus one nodal voltages with respect to the reference node. And, and uh, we, in this way, we find n minus one independent nodal equations. Here you see that we are calculating with currents. So the sum of the currents is zero. That's the basis for our calculation, which means we need to know currents as a function of the voltage in a branch. Um, so the, the current as a function of the voltage in a branch, which means that those elements should have a voltage controlled notation. I is a function of V and not all network elements have voltage controlled notations. A voltage source there, the current does not depend on the voltage. It depends on the voltage in the external circuit. So um, we cannot include a voltage source in purely nodal analysis, but we will deal with it later. So. If we have the nodal analysis, we write that the sum of this occurrence equal the admittance matrix times the nodal voltages. So here we have the sum with the independent currents flowing into a node, then the admittance matrix, and here we have the vector with nodal voltages. Maybe time to do an example after I give you the complete uh, description of the general form of this matrix. So this is the general form of a, uh, of a line in the matrix, of a, uh, a row in the matrix, which is one equation, one nodal equation. So node, node K. And now what does those terms mean? Here you see the sum of the independent currents flowing into the node K. Here we have y k k, which is a diagonal element. It is the position k k in the y matrix times the voltage, the nodal voltage k, of course. And this is the sum. You see the sum of all admittances connected to that node. And all the other terms are off diagonal elements. And they are the sum of the admittances connect between node k and node j. Uh, yeah, if I, if you have Y, K, J. Let's do it. Let's do an example. Let's have a network here. We have a network with a current source, two capacitors and two resistors, and the upper node is selected as reference. So you can also, you can select also node two or node one as reference node. That is not very important. In SPICE, the, uh, it's, commonly used node zero to be the reference node and Slikeup also uses node zero as reference node. So node zero is the reference node. We have two independent nodal equations because we have two other nodes, three nodes in total minus the reference node and one nodal equation for node one is that I1 is flowing. So the, 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 all the currents flowing from those nodes add up to uh, zero, which is here IS, V1, which is the voltage across uh, uh, at node one with respect to the node zero, the reference node. So the plus is on the bottom and the minus is on the plus. So it means that the current is from the plus to the minus through the element. So it is plus V1 times SCA is the current through C1. And the current through RA is V1 times one over RA. And the current through uh, CB is one over is, is SCB times V1, but there's this voltage here. So we have to subtract the voltage from node two. So here we have one equation. 
Now we go to the other equation, node two, the same, we have current flowing from the node. So that is from node two to node zero through R2 and from node two to node one through C2. And here you see, so you see the sign is swapped here in the, uh, in the other uh, term for SCB. We can collect the terms and put it in a matrix as presented on the previous sheet. And then it would look like this. And now look, on the diagonal, element one, one, should be the sum of the admittances connected to node one. You see, connected to node one is SCA, admittance, SCB, C2, plus one over RA. That is directly connected to node one. And an independent current is flowing into the node, but it's here flowing from the node, so it's a minus, minus IS. So, between node one and node two, we have C2, which has a value CB. So the admittance is SCB. So minus the admittance on the off diagonal elements. And at node two, connected to node two, directly connected is, is R2 and C2. So the value RB and CB. So we have SCB plus one over RB. So we don't need this first step. You just look at the circuit and you immediately put everything in a matrix. This is how the matrix is built up. This was node analysis. And unfortunately, I told you, it cannot handle voltage sources. So we need something else for that. So we better do modified node analysis. It can handle elements in voltage controlled notations and elements in current controlled notations. So node analysis we have seen was only uh, suited for elements of which the branch current can be expressed in terms of a voltage. And that was an omission for, so we, can, we cannot do voltage sources. And that is what we, for example, want to have. So let's do the voltage source example. The current cannot be written as a function of the voltage. It's not a voltage controlled element. The current depends on the external network. But the voltage can be written as a function of the current. Namely, it's always the same. So the voltage V, the voltage is node J minus the voltage is node K is V for all values of the current. That is basically what is the fact. And that is a current controlled notation. Aha, <laughs> no, I, I did the note. So the procedure is add the branch current, this IV, to the uh, to the uh, the, the uh, set of variables that you want to solve, and add another expression in the matrix, which is this node this nodal voltages Vj minus Vk equals V to solve it. So unknown current is added to the factor with nodal voltages. It flows from J to K, and the known voltages is added to the vector with nodal currents. That's basically what we're doing. How does it look here? We had our nodal analysis, our nodal currents here, and the admittance matrix, the big block, and the nodal voltages. And what we now do is we have an equation here telling us that V equals V, so the voltage V of this voltage source equals Vj minus Vk. That is here. That's this equation. You see, this equation says V equals Vj minus Vk. And here we have that the current is flowing from node J, which is positive one, into node K, which is negative one. So, and that is the current that is here. So we added one variable and we added one equation and the system can still be solved. That is basically modified nodal analysis. Here we have the branch voltage and here we have the unknown branch current. So instead of nodal voltages, we have a branch current and instead of nodal currents here, we have a branch voltage. And the template analysis, if you ever did this or heard about it, has all the branch currents and all the nodal voltages and uh, of the elements uh, available. 
So now let's look at how to calculate a transfer function from such a network. So let's say I have an independent voltage source and I have a voltage or a current source and I have some, some nodes there and I want to measure the voltage between the nodes. How do I do that? Well, the transfer from an independent variable to a dependent variable, so K to J, I took it here, it can be found from the a matrix inversion one, one coefficient of the matrix inversion, which is a minor matrix. And that is the equal, that is the matrix after leaving row K and column J out of it. And then doing this, I think you have enough, done enough linear algebra to understand how to do, how you should do this. So one gain factor is one element of the invert matrix. And the poles, are found from the determinant m equals zero. You see that's the, uh, the denominator and the zeros are found from the numerator equal the determinant of the numerator equals zero, as simple as that, we just stay to what we knew. And you see all the transfer functions of the networks have the same poles. If we ever ask that. So if you, where, wherever you put your, uh, your signal or your detector, the poles will always be the same. Why? Because the poles were the solution of the homogeneous differential equation, and that didn't need excitations at all. It were properties of the system, as I told you before. And the property uh, does not change if I add an external, uh, if I set an external voltage or set a current. Of course, I must not change the network. So you should not add a voltage source by shorting some node or so, or uh, co connect it. No, the, the voltage source should be included. It's impedance, yes, should be included in the network. And either it has a value zero, the voltage itself, or not. That does not change the poles. But for the zeros, of course, we have this minor. We need to know where is the source and the detector because we have row J and column uh, K to deal with.